Hey, welcome back to the Chris Chow Show, where every Sunday I share with you business and finance news that I'm following and I think you should know. This week, we have a boost to JobKeeper, a bank buying another bank, Jay-Z making bank, drone deliveries, and a record global debt. Before we jump into it, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. With the coronavirus supplement payments coming to an end on the 31st of March, the government has announced a boost to a series of welfare payments, including JobSeeker. If you didn't know, JobSeeker are payments for anyone aged from 22 all the way up to the pension age who are actively looking for work but can't find it. How much you get will depend on a number of factors, including whether you are married or not, whether you have children, and whether or not you're a primary carer. This increase in payment will affect 1.2 million Aussies who are currently getting JobSeeker. From the 1st of April, they will be getting an increase of $50 a fortnight, which equals to $3.57 a day. Overall, the payment will come out to be $615.70 a fortnight if you are single and have no children. While this new rate is higher than what was in place before the pandemic, it's actually lower than what recipients are getting right now. And that's because with the coronavirus supplement, job seekers are currently getting $715.70 a fortnight. Bank of Queensland is buying ME Bank for $1.3 billion. If you didn't know, ME Bank stands for Members Equity Bank and it's currently owned by 26 of Australia's industry super funds, including Australian Super and Host Plus. This acquisition will allow Bank of Queensland to double the size of its retail bank and it will also become the sixth largest lender in Australia. Once the deal is done, Bank of Queensland will have $88 billion in assets, $56 billion in total deposits, and 1.5 million customers. ME Bank informed its customers of this deal on Monday morning, and they said, Day to day, you won't notice a change. We will still be operating as ME Bank, We'll still look and sound like ME with the same great Australian based customer service team and we'll still offer the same simple, straightforward products and services. My key takeaway from this is this is a smart decision from Bank of Queensland. Now they can compete with the big four by having more customers, more assets, and more deposits. French luxury goods powerhouse LVMH has announced that they're taking a 50% stake in Jay-Z's champagne brand Amand de Brignac. Apologies if I butchered that French. The brand is more commonly known as the Ace of Spades and comes in a shiny gold bottle. Before the pandemic, Ace of Spades was enjoying strong sales, selling over 500,000 bottles in 2019. My key takeaway from this is that this is a great deal for both parties. Jay-Z gets cold hard cash and LVMH gets a strategic partner with one of the greatest rappers in history. Aussie drone startup Swoop Aero, that's a cool name, is set to deliver medicine to patients in regional Australia. The company signed a deal with pharmacy chain Terry White Chemmark and the first deliveries will be out of a pharmacy in Gundawindi in the south of Queensland. How it will work is that each drone has a secured, chilled container. The pharmacist will put the medicine inside the container. Back in Melbourne, a pilot will fly the drone and deliver it to the patient's location. Once the drone arrives, the patient will go to the drone and scan a QR code. That will unlock the container and they can take the medicine out. Drones will be used to deliver medicine within a 130 km range of the town. This will spare regional patients up to three hours, which they would have to take if they wanted to go to their local pharmacy. My key takeaway from this is this is a great practical way to use drone technology, and hopefully we'll see more beneficial uses of drones. So the COVID pandemic has resulted in 24 trillion, trillion dollars being added to global debt over the last year. That's all heckin' lot of debt. This brings the global debt level to a record $281 trillion and the worldwide debt to GDP ratio is at a staggering 355%. The Institution of International Finance's Global Debt Monitor estimated that government support programs made up half of the rise. While global firms added $5.4 trillion, banks added $3.9 trillion and households added $2.6 trillion. 
My key takeaway from this is that even though I majored in economics, I am not informed enough to make a call on how this will impact the global or Australian economy. What I can say is that eventually governments around the world will have to pay back their debts. And one way to do so is to raise taxes. The other one is to cut spending. So don't be too surprised if either of these two starts happening in the near future. And in this week's crypto corner, we have fintech company Square doubling down on its Bitcoin investment. The company bought an additional 3,318 Bitcoins worth around $170 million. Square said that the purchase represents around 5% of their total assets as of the end of 2020. For full disclosure, I am an investor in Square. My key takeaway from this is this is not surprising at all when you realize that Square owns Cash App. Cash App generated $4.57 billion in Bitcoin revenue. So it makes perfect sense for Square to invest in Bitcoin. Also, Square CEO Jack Dorsey is a Bitcoin believer. On his Twitter profile, it just says the word hashtag Bitcoin. Fun fact, Jack Dorsey is also the CEO of Twitter. And as I've said in previous videos, more and more companies will be adding Bitcoin to their balance sheets. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash the like button. Make sure to subscribe for a new video every Sunday where I share with you business and finance news that I'm following and I think you should follow too. As always, an important disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice. This video and my channel is for general information only. As with anything in life, you should do your own due diligence and seek independent advice.